I just want to tell ya that this is Sonny Hollywood Pooney from the Growing Up Rock Podcast, and you are listening to Shout It Out Loudcast with my buddies Tom and Zeus. They will dance all over your face, but you have to ask them nicely. Hey, what's up there, Kisami? Tom and Zeus with another episode of Shout It Out Loud Cast. Episode 47, Larger Than Life. Tom, how you doing? What's up, buddy? It's uh, it's it's early in the week for us here. The uh, Thanksgiving holiday threw us a curveball. We're, we're recording early. Yeah, so I guess we're not going <clears> to <throat> do... Hey, uh, Grandpa, pass me over the casserole. Hold on a second. And then uh, Ace, what do you think of that song, uh, that solo, Tom? Uh, wait a minute, what? <laughs> right in the middle of Thanksgiving, we should have taped this episode. I know, oh, I know, it would have been good. Yeah, so everybody listen, hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, it's early for us. It's Tuesday because of the holiday schedule. So, But by the time you hear this, uh, hopefully you had a fun and festive Thanksgiving with your family and friends. Yep, I hope nobody uh, got into a fist fight. You guys didn't get into politics. You guys didn't get into uh, old grievances and fights and everything else that can happen on Thanksgiving. You guys enjoyed each other's company, ate a lot of food, drank a lot of beer, and had a lot of fun. And played a little kiss. Yeah, because nothing says Thanksgiving like escape from the island. (laughs) (laughs) Let's play some festive music. Let's play Torpedo Girl. (laughs) Oh, I I don't think I don't think Kiss has any festive Thanksgiving music. Well, a lot of people like to think. I can't do Paul. I can't can't do it. Okay, honestly, I thought you were doing Stephen Michael again. (laughs) (laughs) It's not sound like Stephen Michael. Stephen Michael sounds like I I I sound a little bit like this. Zeus, you have bad taste in music. That's what Steven sounds like. Uh, let's not get into bad taste of music based on their most recent episode. Oh, oh terrible decisions. Terrible decisions. Dude. Sunny too. Oh, Sonny's terrible. Favorite kiss album is Asylum. You don't have to go further than that. <laughs> that's <laughs> Stop, true. Right? Uh, yeah, but what about no? Nope. Stop nope. right there. His that's favorite it. album is Asylum. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. Um, so any kiss news out there? I thought there was plenty. All right, you go ahead because this is actually, I'm actually kind of relieved for the first time in a few weeks. There's not like, you know, freaking Grammy Award winning ex guitar players or fucking kiss cruises to talk about. So you start yeah. us off this time. Well, I'll tell you one real quick thing. It was, uh, you know, the anniversary of poor Eric Carr's passing. God yeah. bless him and his family. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the super him and Bruce Kulick, probably the only two that I can ever think of. Never hear a, a negative word said about them. Um, Absolutely. Yep. So there was a lot of good tributes out there to Eric. Um, and, uh, you know, they put up the old Rolling Stone letter that Paul sent out. Yes, that was amazing to see that again. If you had and guys he- haven't seen that, check that out. Yeah, and he did that way back then to just, you know, to call out Rolling Stone that didn't want to, you know, it's beneath them to, you know, to acknowledge Eric Carr as the musician and the man and the person that, you know, was a contributor to Kiss that passed away. Um, it's just, you know, typical Rolling Stone and stuff. But yeah, and it, it was it also was nice to see. That. Yeah, and it was, you know, and it was also, um, you know, we all know he passed away on the same day as Freddie Mercury. And at that time, Queen was, you know, on top of the world and Kiss was kind of an afterthought. So, you know, and of course, like Zeus said, we know where Rolling Stone stands with Kiss. So, yeah, and it's it's a shame to see that. But on a happier note, did you was there? I mean, I'm going to segue into something else. Did you have anything else you wanted to add first? Uh, in terms of kiss news, no, this is for the first time in a couple weeks. There's really nothing. that's kind of quiet right now. So, you know, yeah, until they, Paul's until they hit covering. And, yeah. Until they head over to, uh, Japan and now about a week. So, yeah. yeah. You don't want to rehash the old shark episode, right? Oh God. No, thank God. That's behind us. Enough with that silliness pajamas on boats and all that kinds of shit. Goodbye. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Silly. 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 Um, so. Yeah, um, I happen to be (laughs) 
perusing the internet as I do. And I happen to stumble across somebody else commenting on something. <laughs> and one of our, apparently one of our awesome listeners, because I'm assuming they got it from us, decided to make a Twitter profile of our good friend, Stuart. And it's the picture of him with Ace on his shirt, which I think I saw that from a good friend in Australia, which I'm wondering if that's him that created this. Yep. And <laughs> it just been busting sh- the balls on anything Eddie Trunk does. Um, it's fucking hilarious. It, it is I'm telling you, right. I don't know who's let, let's just get it out in the open. Let's say, let's address the elephant in the room. It is not myself or Zeus. Okay. We know that we call him Stuart and we know that we have listeners and fans out there that are a little bit insane. So who's ever done it, you are entertaining people. Um, the obvious, it's obviously a fan of the show because they know, you know, the way we talk about Stuart. Um, <laughs> they talk about his cargo pants. Yeah, they it's talk about his mandals. <laughs> and they keep talking about they make jokes about his him being friends with Ace. Like it, it's def it's you it's Mega definitely f- but then again it could be anybody because that's what he does. That's uh, true. It's true. It's no, like you're right. Name dropping. I th- I'm gonna pull it up. Pull it up. You guys, you guys gotta see this. Pull I fucking died when I saw it. So I retweeted it from our account. So oh, yeah. this is the Stuart Trunk. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> that's his full name. Read the his read full- the read the yeah. page description. Hi. I used to love KISS until Paul and Jean kicked me out of the KISS army. <laughs> I am now a hater in love repeating stories, name dropping, mandals. In cargo shorts. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> and then he only has one tweet, but he's been like tweeting replies and stuff to everything. Yeah, he, but he, he only just, has he, one tweet out there, what, and it goes like this: "Hi, everyone. Did I ever tell you guys the story of how I signed my best friend Ace Fraley <laughs> to Megaforce Records? <laughs> Fucking hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> At some point, he's got to see that and be uh, like, I know. "What the fuck is this?" And and and, and who's ever who's ever out there kind of running this? If if you want to send us uh, an email or a or a private DM something, just we Tell need us who it is. Yeah, we we got to know who is behind this because it's it's epic and it's 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 entertaining. And, and we're already getting the it's you guys. Is it Zeus? Is it Tommy? Who is it? I'm like, it's not us. So somebody somebody asked if it was Murph. <laughs> Speaking of Murph, oh. we get a lot of feedback on our Thanksgiving. It's always people like Murph, yeah, Murph. What the fuck is that? I heard the the best quote I heard. I I can't remember who it was from. I, I shame on you for not remembering. They said something like. It, 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 you know, instead of make America great again, somebody said, oh, make America Murph again. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah, no thanks. Um, <laughs> Murph. What the fuck? Is- <laughs> He's a cult hero. Apparently. Apparently. Yep. Um, but to segue back to Stuart, <laughs> did you happen to hear his fucking interview with Ace? My lord. Fucking. <laughs> I don't even know where to go. You you start with this. It's fucking brutal. Holy shit. Like, it sounds like somebody, like, invited me to go on there and prank the show and yep. act like Ace. Yep. There is no hey, way. What's up? There there is fucking... n- no, I'm not shit for you. Well, what? Hey, Ace, do you have any uh, Kiss songs on this new album of yours you're doing? The, uh, about of, uh, a bunch of, uh, what do you call it? Cover songs. Covers, yeah. uh, I don't know. Do I? I don't know. He's fucking Stuart is like, do you have any? He's like, oh, no. all right, we'll, we'll take a break and we'll see. He doesn't even fucking know. So he doesn't know what's on his own album, but he's telling us stories about the when he was in Kiss in the 70s. And he can remember those. He's look, God bless him. 
he claims that he's 13 years sober, and I really hope that he is, and God bless him for that. Holy shit. He I sounds. He I just think he's fucking. He just I think like blasted just, his brain out. Yeah, he's just got fucking wet brain. He's oh a. My God. He's a Not mess. Only that he he was like, um, he didn't remember if there was a kiss song, and then they asked him. I think they was like plugging. Hey, so where are you playing next, Ace? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what the? Do you know where you are right now, dude? <laughs> he wouldn't even plug where he was playing next. Oh. Holy fuck. The worst part about this is he goes and and Stuart like loves propping him up and is so hands on like flashback into his days when oh. he had a fucking manage ace and little like watch him like making these like softball que- like setting it up, propping it up, making everything easy for him. He's like, oh, yeah, you you know, it's amazing. Ace, like your memory is so much better now. What the fuck was it then? Holy shit. Yeah. And, and then I like two aces like, yeah, people tell me I look so much better now than I did 15 years ago. I used to be bloated. Now I just look like a Muppet. <laughs> Dude, he looks like the fucking creature from the Black Lagoon with a mullet. <laughs> he looks like the Muppet gang. He looks like one of the guys in the Muppet gang that oh. plays in that band. Yeah. Oh my That's God. Dr. Dr. Eath. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it first starts off with the fucking little racist joke about yeah, the black guy love it. It's Gucci. I can't. <laughs> Stuart is like, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so you, uh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, so you you picked up on that too. For the first time in my life, I think I felt I fe- think I felt bad for Eddie Trunk because he was like, okay, so next we're gonna go. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he goes. Yeah, the black guys are gonna love it. It's fucking Gucci. What? And he goes. This is how bad it is. He's like, yeah, you know, I got a nickname I came up with. I'm gonna under an alias. I'm gonna play Caesar's Palace and do stand up. And Trunks like, you are? Nah, I'm just fucking. Dude, he really thought he was gonna fucking do stand up at Caesar's Palace. I actually, <laughs> honestly, I don't, I don't blame Eddie Trunk for believing it because th- through the entire interview, you couldn't tell if Ace was serious or just fucked. I listened to that. I, the first thing I wrote down at that whole part was cringe. I am cringing because it's yeah. so un- like I can picture me being Eddie fucking Trunk at that moment. Yeah, not really because I'm not wearing mandals and cargo shorts, but I could picture Stuart like panicking, going, "What the fuck is going to come out of his mouth?" Yeah. In the way that you think about that, Paul is such a control freak. Can you imagine that? So there's a lot of good, interesting stuff that went on this. Amongst the things he does, he talks about banging Superman's daughter or something. I don't know. He's a cousin or something like that. Yeah. When I went up there, there was a cape. It was in a glass case. And Eddie Trunk goes, really? I was like, what the fuck are we listening to? <laughs> that, it's a, that it's its cousin. Why would Superman's cousin have a cape on the staircase? It sounds anyways. like a fucking bad Seinfeld episode. Oh, my God. <laughs> then they start discussing the old filet of fish story. Yeah, oh I fed a filet of fish. Dude, that is the most disgusting thing I could think of. <laughs> Being so shit-faced. Somebody get me a filet of fish. That'll <laughs> sober me up. Dude, that Watch sounds it. like that Go sounds ahead. like something I would have done for you at fucking Stonehill. Yeah, but like, how disgusting and slovenly, like, <laughs> fucking this degenerate in the back of a fucking limo is all fucked up. And in order to get him going, you get a fucking force feed him filet of fish sandwiches. Uh, I'll give Stuart credit; he did a pretty good Ace impersonation during that fish. <laughs> Fish sandwich. <laughs> fish. What the oh fuck, God. dude? It was That's disgusting. What do you might as well gave him egg salad to eat too in the middle of that? Oh. It was, oh. So do you want to get into some of the some of the good questions yeah. that wait, wait, I'm not done. I know, this uh, was, a, this is whole... a fucking hour's worth of fucking laugh. It really is then, a mess. Then he talked about some interesting stuff that he said. He goes, yeah, my friend Lita, we go way back, Lita, four and nine. 
she kicked some other blonde out of my house. You know, the other blonde. Is he talking about Rachel? I, I don't know. Maybe, probably. Like she came in and kissed her. Uh, yeah. I got a new love of my life. You want to hear the song I play for her? He's like, what? Dude, that what? was so embarrassing. He's he played he, like, he, he, yeah. he played that song from the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, like a disco song. And he's like, can you hear that? And Eddie's like, yeah, I can hear that. W- w- what are we doing right now? Yeah, like, I, this is how I can't write sometimes. Tell her, I just say, this is how you make me feel. What the fuck? It was. Uh, and and there are people. And, She's and there my are, new girl. And there are people out there that think Ace is coming back. He's <laughs> fucking serious. Oh, and then he talks about the terrorist. Go ahead. You got that one. The, the terrorist. <laughs> what? They're playing music for the terrorist. And, oh, yeah, they're playing my songs. I think oh, maybe it was Paradise. Oh, oh yeah. I say, yeah, they were dressed up in makeup. They were, I don't know what song they were playing, but they, you know, I'm like, talk about rambling incoherence. And and I'll tell you right now, and I felt, I did feel bad for Eddie Trunk for a little bit because he was trying to keep that fucking train on the tracks and it was not working. (laughs) He said, then he starts quoting Abe Lincoln. And (laughs) the worst fuck, dude, that's not Abe Lincoln. Yeah, he said, like, you know, some people are just fucking miserable. What? Yeah, and, and then he fucked up another quote. He's like, "Yeah, you know what's that say? You sow what you reap." <laughs> no, 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 no. It's you reap what you sow. <laughs> oh that was so fucking funny. And then he just and he talked about. He was like, he was mentioning some names, and uh, of course, Stewart jumps in and goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Uh, yeah, Ace, we were doing this and you were talking to so and so. Yeah, you know, he's a friend of mine too. And <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. You had to drop that. that. You yeah. had to drop that in there, Stuart. But what, um, else, what else did he drop in, though? Our favorite line from Stuart. Well, yeah, you know, when I signed him to Mega Force Records. Oh, like, Mega dude, Force just, Records. Like, you couldn't, you can't leave that out. Yeah, I know, but like. He says that so much. I got like, like he discovered Ace or something. But then he talked about, yeah, Paul. Yep. And it was interesting stuff because you can tell in the beginning of the episode, Eddie's trying to get all that shit out of him about Kiss. Yep. And he's not liking what Ace is saying because Ace is being positive. Yeah, I love those guys. And I put that in quote. I love those guys. Yeah, you know, oh, we fight. Oh, we're all good, right? We're a good place. I just talked to Paul over here. Notice how he doesn't say the Gene because I think, I don't think he's mad at him, but I think he's uncomfortable about how shit was left. He yeah. kicked that crazy douchebag out of his life that yep. stirred up all that shit. And I, you know, I, and he said something interesting. Yeah, I don't want to do a one off. Maybe the last year I'll be on the tour. And he was talking about how he's good buddies with Doc and making it sound like Doc is a fucking drug addict. Yeah, when Doc, you know, doesn't want to play cards, he wants something better, he hang out with me. Yeah, you know, like, I noticed that too. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, Paul and Gene, they're straight. So when you know Doc wants to have fun, he knocks on my hotel room door. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if he wants something more, a little more, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, fucking, when, you know, when Paul the cr- a drug addict. <laughs> yeah, you know, when when the critic wants to get high. <laughs> Me but what the else? The puppet but, but, and the critic. But another thing, another interesting thing that Ace said. He goes, "Yeah, he goes. I don't. I don't want to come back for one show, maybe for the last year, if the price is right. Price is wrong, bitch, bitch." Uh, <laughs> and then he made a story about. Yeah, he came in and played my album. He, I did the. Yeah. If you notice the guitar solo. Is longer because I wanted Paul to do the other half. And Paul said, Why don't you know who'd be great for you? my son Evan? Yep. And then he says, I don't I only want famous people. I'm yeah. like, Could what? you imagine say that to Paul Stanley? Well, I don't funny- want your son. He's not famous enough to be on my record. Oh my god. 
God. I said the same thing, and I love how we we didn't get uh, we we're never gonna know Paul's response. But you're right. Ace was like, "Yeah, I'd rather have somebody on my album that has a little bit more, you know, notor, a little bit more, uh, you know, name recognition." <laughs> Paul must have been like, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> Good for him, though. Good for Ace. Yeah, Good yeah. Ace. Well, you know what? Let's be serious. Paul doing that, that was kind of a passive-aggressive move. Hey, yeah, Ace, why don't you put my son on your album? And Ace is like, okay, with all due respect, Paul, nobody knows who the fuck your son is. Yeah, I, I'm sure he could do and do a decent job. I'm not here to fucking pat him on the back. Pay me 5000 and I could put him on my album so he can get notoriety that he was on my album. Fuck but that. why would but but uh, this is going to be the rare instance where I'm going to kind of side with Ace. Why would Ace yeah. put Evan Stanley on his fucking <laughs> album? Do you know what I mean? Like why would why would he? And I think Paul knows that, which is why he probably said it. Oh. You know, you know, we all know Paul. Paul's kind of a little slippery there with some of his some of his mechanisms. You know, who one of the background fucking performers from ELO? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But that is wicked. Like I couldn't believe he said that to him. You got anyway, to yeah, you, you got to check out this interview. It's available. It's on YouTube. Of, oh no, no, no! He had a couple more things. Oh no, no, I know, I know. I'm just telling people make sure they listen to it. But go ahead. Yeah. He couldn't think of the word influence, so they had a couple of the Foo Fighters on. Yeah. And they were talking about influence. <laughs> he goes, and who who did you get into? And he goes, well, I no, no Hendrix, Jeff Beck. They were my like. Uh, uh, um, What's the word? Uh, yeah, uh, Stu, it's like influence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was talking about yeah, I hooked up with some of the Rockettes, and uh, he talked about maybe he kept t- hinting at a new book uh, about maybe touring and playing 1978 solo album. Yep. Hey, what, what, what should the name of my book be, Eddie? What do you think? Like asking him on what do you mean on, on the spot? What's my name in my next book? Um <laughs> then he asks Stuart asks him about the Hendrix story. He knows that story. It's in Ace's book. Ace yep. has told that story 15. That's what I'm talking about. These softballs propping him up, helping him out. He would never do that to anybody else. And he talks about everyone else needing help and shit like that. Give me a break. Because he has uh, to then, make sure he has to make sure that his <laughs> friendship remains with Ace. He, he's not going to say anything to alienate him. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a foot rub interview. So then he started talking about bands with Foo Fighters, and he's yeah. like, "When did Pearl Jam come in? Wait a minute, did these guys come out? Be you guys came out before Pearl Jam, right? <laughs> so I, no, 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 no." Uh, they, uh, they was in uh, Nirvana. Nirvana. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> he had it's, no it's, fucking clue. Honestly, who was what and when Pearl Jam came out or anything, dude. It's like it's like when you see like in, a, in like a movie, like a comedy, you know, like like a, like a homeless guy or something. He just he he he, he he's in cool. He's I have written in my the notes drummer here. of uh, Nirvana uh, of uh, Foo Fighters, Taylor Hawkins. Yeah, so he was talking. Yeah. And it's like, I, oh, you know, they were talking about bands and how they grew up. And he was talking, he wasn't into metal and stuff. He grew up listening to pop music and yep. other stuff. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm a drummer, this and that. Going on about drumming, 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 drumming. And so they asked him, then they asked Ace about, um, did, you know, did you ever take guitar lessons? No, I picked it up by ears. He goes, what about you? Did you ever take guitar lessons? Well, not really, since I'm a drummer. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was, <laughs> he's just. <laughs> He just went on and on about how he's yep. drumming and how he learned. What about you? You take your guitar lessons? Taylor Hawkins was like, dude, no, I'm a fucking drummer. <laughs> oh, it, it was. It, it was like someone said, pretend you're ace and take this call from the radio station, Zeus. Go ahead and do it. Just exa- go along. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was like a parody. It was brutal. And I'll tell you, I felt, and I did feel bad. And then when people were asking him, uh, you know, uh, Stewart took a couple questions from the oh, crowd. God, awful. It awful. was, yeah, it was awful. What's your favorite rock song? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, they're like, you played your 78 solo album complete, start to finish. Do you think you'll do that again and maybe make a video? I don't know. My solo album's only like 40 minutes. If I, uh, what am I going to do after I play that again? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Do you like do you like rock music? 
Thanks. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, uh, I'm sorry I went off on a tangent. But no, that, that's good. That's good. It's worth that talking. That was fucking funny. But we haven't uh, heard we haven't heard Ace talk like in a long form type of interview in a while. So that, that was straight out of the horse's mouth. Kiss Army. No, oh, I love those guys. Yeah. Also, st- also straight out of the horse's mouth. I'm not doing one show. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Exactly. Uh, the other thing I was going to ask if you wanted to address before we get into the uh, um, feedback and polls and stuff. Um, did you want to um, talk about the book in the news? Which book are we referring to specifically? The magic book. Um, or do you I'll, want to save it for another time? No, I'll, I'll, I'll just briefly touch on it uh, just because I'm, a, I'm kind of a little bit involved with it. Um, yeah. You know, and there's, there's another podcast out there that kind of covered it. So if, if anybody's out there who is involved in the uh, Magic the Kiss Chronicles book, you know, it looks like an absolutely fantastic product. Um, unfortunately, nobody knows when it's going to come out. Um, you know, this if, is if Tom, th- this is a thing he started five years ago and it fell through. Uh, about eighteen months ago, he was trying to do like a crowdfunding type thing. Um, pre-orders were taken. The book keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. Now, people, there's some suggestions that maybe he's trying to strike a deal with act- with the actual band with Paul and Gene. Um, you know, look, Ross seems to be a nice guy. He seems to like, he may have been over his head a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, you know, maybe down the road, maybe we can get him on our show and he can uh, explain what's going on. We can ask him some questions. I don't know. I mean, again, he seems like a good guy with good intentions. Um, and his ideas for his book look absolutely amazing. It looks like a really unique product. So hopefully down the road, it will come to fruition and hopefully down the road, maybe, like I said, we can have him on and, and kind of asking some questions and kind of clear the air because there are unfortunately a lot of rumors out there about what's going on with that. Yep. Yep. So we had uh, our Thanksgiving episode, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, we had math. We had and, the champ uh, on. That's we right. We had some feedback from the Thanksgiving episode. Yeah, a lot of um, people. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say mostly about we put up the poll. Who are you thankful for in KISS? Yeah, so on Facebook we did uh, we did who are you most thankful for, Paul or Gene? Uh, and a- as of now, at the time of this recording, um, there's almost 800 votes, which is pretty awesome. And right now it's about 60 40 Paul. Wow. However, however, there's a lot of comments. Ace, ace, ace. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Paul's Paul's dominating the the, uh, the Facebook now. Once again, here we go on Twitter. On Twitter, we did who are you most thankful for, and we listed the four original members. So as of the time of this recording, there's about about 450 votes, which is great. 400, 450 pieces. Four, yeah, you, you bet you have 450 pieces. <laughs> Pounds, baby. So 450 votes, give or take. How is Ace leading the poll? Forty oh, def- percent. I I can definitely see that. Are you kidding 40? me? No, I know, I know. Forty percent of the votes are for Ace, thirty-three percent are for Paul, twenty-one for Gene, and poor Peter, six percent. You got my vote. <laughs> that's, so your that's, one, one that, vote? that's your one vote. That's, that's their one. Peter. Poor Peter, six percent. I got him. That was me. That was yep. me. Yep. So maybe two other people. Good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Moving up. Um, I thought that was interesting. Poor uh, Paul. Poor Peter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anything on before we get uh, into our uh, episode? No, I mean, like you said, it's kind of kind of a it's kind of a quiet week. Um, you know, a lot of the major news has kind of passed us by. They know, they won't start touring. They'll be in Japan probably in about a week. Um, so before we get into our topic, um, we're going to uh, pause for a little break. It's time to uh, hit the drive through and get a couple fillet of fish. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, yes. So 
this week we decided to come up with something. You know, there have been a lot of hints, a lot of rumors, a lot of, um, you know, uh, internet spark about a Kiss movie, especially since, like, you know, The Dirt came out and all that. What are they going to do? Are they going to do a documentary? There was a documentary supposedly happening years ago. Oh, now they're going to do a movie. We were talking about this. So we decided to say, if Kiss comes up with a movie, what are the 10 things that we, me and Tom, want to see covered in the movie? That, that has to be in a scene in the movie. Yeah. Not glossed over, not Star Wars scroll, talked about, played, acted, what part? And obviously this is subjective, so, you know, we'll each go uh, down our list. We try to do this chronologically because we felt like it would make more sense that way. So, Tom, anything else you want to add before we start the list? It's just, it's tough trying to come up with 10 key things about a band that's been around for, you know, 45 plus years and has. Right. Right just an unbelievable amount of important events throughout their history. So, you know, this, this will be good. I mean, you know, these are, these are the bullet points that we hit. Um, I'm sure there might be some duplicates, but I'm, you know, we can discuss that if there are. So, so number one, Tom, what's the number one scene that you want, not number one in value, but the first scene that you want to make sure is covered in a kiss movie. Okay, so the movie would start off with Wicked Lester and the birth of the band, the intro, you know, Paul and Gene meeting them, meeting each other, um, and just kind of the seeds of of the, you know planting the seeds of of what Kiss would become. All right, interesting because uh, gee, that's mine. Yeah. So and, and it, if and I again, was a movie director, I would start with literally some guys, some little kid from the seventies, dirty room. And people talking, and all of a sudden, someone goes, "Hey, this is you know, this is Stanley. This is Gene, Gene Klein. Yeah, do you play any music? Why don't you play me a song? That's gonna be there. And then maybe Paul, like you, you stop, and it's Paul's voiceover. Yeah, this is gonna be my partner for forty five years, but I think he's an asshole right now. <laughs> you know, the balls on him to ask me to play. Fuck him." And then Gene saying, who's this guy I think he is? I bet you his music sucks. You know, something like that. That's that how would, I would see it. I actually like that idea that you just said about having like voiceover. Yeah. Um, I think that works because I think if, correct me if I'm wrong, I think in the dirt, they did some voiceovers um, to, on some of those crazy scenes. Um, yeah, but a lot of those like movies, bi- biography yeah. movies, they stop and they start saying, yeah, what was I thinking? Oh yep. my God. Then this happened, you know, but I think that. Because, you know, like the kids are acting out. I'm sure they weren't. Remember, Paul says what he thought about Gene. Gene says what he thought about Paul. I didn't think I was being an asshole. I wanted to hear him play. He didn't realize how he was coming off. I think it'd be great to hear the voice in Paul's head to be like, what a fucking dick. (laughs) Yep. No, you're (laughs) right. You're right. And to say this dick is going to be my partner for the next 45 years. You know, I thought that would be pretty cool. What is yep. the second thing you want to see covered in this movie? So again, we're covering a, a, a an unbelievable amount of time. So you kind of had to pick and choose yeah, your thing. You don't so, have to preface it, but we all right. Love- so after so so after that, I would I would kind of go, kind of formulate some kind of scene. Get a little bit of a scene going over here. <laughs> Who's that? Sparky, Sparky the clown. Yeah, I got a little bit of a scene over here. He's gonna do fucking uh, tricks and <laughs> do fucking some backflips. <laughs> gonna do some juggling. <laughs> we want you to get involved in the crowd if you want. You know, be some guys, some a few guys, a few broads laying around the house. <laughs> no, you know, I I do a children's magic show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you maybe you can throw some fire bombs. <laughs> you bounce off the terrace. You fall down. It's only a couple floors up there, Spocky. Whatever your name is. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> uh, I do a magic show. When this week? Nah, next week. I'm uh, I'm booked up. We're gonna do the whole fucking routine. I can do the whole fucking. Routine. I know. I want to do right. some juggling, some fire bomb, throw some knives. All right. 
Well, he so wanted I, to get the clown involved in his fucking <laughs> fucking orgy, whatever he was doing. <laughs> what the fuck was that? The we got some broads <laughs> hanging around. You can get involved. The guy, the guy kept saying, I do a children's magic show. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I'm writing a children's magic book about Kiss. <laughs> you can come around, throw Gene can throw some firebombs at you and shit. <laughs> okay. Ugh. All right. All right. What's number two? All right. So I got uh, when Bill Coin met the band and was hired as their manager. Okay. So their first interaction with Bill? Yeah. So uh, th- th- there's well, in my top 10, I kind of have like a couple of. I kind of had, I don't have like specific events. I have like time frames. So I have like Bill of coin meeting the band being hires the manager and then kind of going into like their first album, like that kind of time frame. Oh, I but have de- a, like a movie. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm doing this from a director's point of view. Yeah, go ahead. That's so fine. I've got my scene is them performing. Yep. For Neil Bogart and them. Okay. If you remember this, this is when Sean Delaney says him and Bill were like, these guys got my utter like fucking respect and loyalty forever. Where after they played, people's like jaws were like on the floor. Gene gets off the stage, walks over, grabs Neil Bogart's hands and makes him clap. Makes him clap. Yep. I think that's fucking iconic. Yep. And I think you could do a voiceover with that where, where like Sean talks and says, you know, these guys, I'm so I'll fucking never I'll do whatever I want for these guys. And, you know, it, it'll look like it's trying to be like woke. But Kiss had two fucking like openly gay people helping them out between their managers. And we, we know Sean was jack of all trades. That's right. And yep. Neil was fucking high on crack or whatever he was. Neil Bogart at the time. Yep. And for them to like to see this. And then Neil Bogar could have been just like, and then this fucking guy comes off the stage and makes me clap my hands. I didn't know if I wanted to run or sign them that minute or, you know, to get his perspective, what he just saw it makes the crowd or the audience feel like, what the fuck is this? Yep. Confidence, ballsy move right yeah. there. Like you said, I, I very inside history, iconic move right there. Yep. 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 Yeah. So number three <laughs> for you. Number three for me. So kind of moving along a, a little bit of a brisk pace, but so I would include their very v- first television appearance in 1974 on ABC's In Concert. Okay. Um, the first time that the world actually saw them without, you know, I mean, at the time they were doing clubs, um, but to see them on a, you know, a real, um, you know, it wasn't prime time yet. That was, that was still, that still hadn't happened yet. Um but, you know, February 1974, they performed Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, and Black Diamond. Um, and that was on ABC's In Concert. So just yep. their first their first exposure to the masses. Cool. I like that one. Yep. Um, for me, number three, I'm skipping a little bit further ahead. Yeah, you, ha- you kind of have I'm going to. by, um, my thing is, like, I, again, I'm trying to go by... I'm not saying these other things like things that I'm not saying and things that you're saying that are in there yeah. aren't going to be in the movie, but I'm saying these to me have to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously there's other important parts, but I like, I picked 10. So my number three is the kiss army forming. Okay. Perfect. Another voiceover of kids talking about fuck this. You're not going to play kiss. And then them talking about it. Yep. And seeing it from their perspective. So the no, Kiss Army forming. No, it's great. I I, I agree. I mean, th- those formative years, there's so many key moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be interesting if and when a, a Kiss biopic comes out, how they're going to. We can compare it. That would be the great part. Like, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, they exactly. got four of, four of uh, ten of mine. They got seven of yours, you know. Yep. We'll see. Yep. Yep. So you're number four. Uh, so right around that time, I mean, this is, so, so the kiss army, you know, that this whole thing, you know, I I got obviously the release of the alive album, right. (laughs) And then the the, whole bunch of stuff happened within a very short period of time, right now around that 1974, 75 area. You got, like you said, the kiss army, you got kiss alive, you got the Cadillac, Michigan, the, you know, going to that in the football team and the mayor with the key painting his face and the, those iconic. 
yeah, but you keep mentioning these things. Just get to the thing because we obviously we're not going to get on to. And I, and right. I'm curious to see what, not what you're not putting in. I'm curious to see what you are putting. In. So you don't have to mention things because I don't. It's okay. not as though I don't think you know about them or you don't think they're important. But I'm curious to see what you would say. I okay. has to be in so there. number so I know number about the Cadillac and stuff. Number f- number ahead. four on my list is just the Kiss Alive. And the story surrounding that release and what it did for the band. Yeah, maybe them looking around go, dude, this is selling like this. Yep. Are you shitting me? And all of a sudden the money coming in. The iconic album, the recording itself, the um, you know, what it did for them. The you know, the, <laughs> well, the them rock. laughing go, yeah, this sounds like this is live. Hold on, play that part over again. In this yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. You know, the, the live version of Rock and Roll All Night, you know, how iconic that became. Yeah. You know, the album, the gatefold picture on the back, kids, and it wasn't even a fucking Kiss concert. <laughs> yep. No, I, I, so, I think that's a great one. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm going further ahead. Go ahead. Um, I'm skipping ahead to Madison Square Garden, them playing four nights there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, I'm thinking, I'm not four nights, but when they first sell out Madison, Madison Square Garden in February 77. That's my number uh, five. That's my number five. So go ahead. We'll talk about that okay. together. So I have that as another one of these awesome sequences where even Ace can talk about being there. Peter, um, all four of them's perspective in voiceovers talking about how they can't believe they're getting here and them behind the stage hearing the crowd go nuts and them like, holy shit, boys, can you believe we're doing this? I think that would be a, something that has to be there when they're sold out Madison Square Garden. Absolutely. Yep. I got that. That's my number five as well. Yep. Iconic moment for a bunch of kids all from that area. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Um, my five is part of the whole Beatlemania, the rise of Kiss and all that craziness is now they're entering Japan their first time and okay. seeing how big Kiss is in Japan and then breaking the Beatles record and just the Pandemonium breaking wild and oh in Japan with Kiss enters and all of a sudden tears shit up over there. Yep. I think that would be a nice little different, like people not realizing how big they got. So yep. people that want to see a movie about Kiss don't really know about Kiss, hear this and they go, They did what? Holy shit. They were that big, you know. Yeah, I think yep. that would be great. Yep. All right. So for my number six, so I was struggling to see, cause I was going to try to break this down by, cause a lot of stuff happened here in 1978, but so I was going to, the, the big thing that I think for the band, which led to what happened after the aftermath of what, of it is the release of the solo albums, 78, the decision to record them, the release. Keep going, of, cause that's my number six, yep, the, 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 the simultaneous release of them, um, what each band member thought about them, what the public thought about them, how this, it launched ACE into the stratosphere. Um, he kind of came out from the shadows um, and kind of what that led to. So, you know, that whole kind of timeline right there around that solo albums. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. I, I had as my number six and, and that's when you have the voiceovers you can start doing. Yep. Everybody's going their own way. They're not, all for one anymore everyone's got no i've got to do the best album oh fuck him his album sucks all that shit and all the turmoil and you can talk about sean delaney talking about oh bad idea i don't like this solo album shit yep there's that foreshadowing of what's to come in the future yep um number seven uh so number seven for me so i i jump ahead a little bit Uh, obviously between 78 late 70s early 80s was obviously a lot of uh, chaos and disruption within the band, but I'm going to kind of jump ahead and go to, you know, one of the most obvious things that ever happened with the history of the band, 1983, the unmasking event on MTV. Um, You know, that was probably other than the solo albums, maybe one of the most iconic turning point moments for the, for the band and the, and the history. And then what led to that uh, and the, and the future of the band during the eighties. But starting with the unmasking. It's good because now you're bringing two new characters in. Right. Exactly. And yep. you know, us Kiss fans are going to be dying 
to see who the fuck did they cast as Vinny? What is the Vinny character going to be like? Well, we know it was probably good. It's probably going to be like someone like Joyce DeWitt. <laughs> it's going to be a fucking baby bird embryo. <laughs> <laughs> that was the look in 1983. And then obviously, yep. you know, Eric Carr, give him some love and hopefully they give him, you know, show how awesome he was in the band. Yeah, back then too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, as, now if I can just say, so as far as rock biopics go now, um, I don't know if you know this. I'm a massive Elton John fan. I've been an Elton John fan since I was a little kid, and I still love him to this day. I don't, if anybody out there has not seen the movie Rocket Man, that is one of the best made and best told biopics I've ever seen. And that kind of template would be perfect for Kiss. If anybody has, I don't know, I don't know who's out there listening. If you're Elton John fans, if you if you are, if you see that movie. And I, I think Kiss would be wise to follow a template like that. Starts from the 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 rise of them, the 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 peak of his career, the downfall, the recoup, the the kind of recovery, getting themselves back. Um, Elton John's career kind of followed a similar kind of roller coaster and trajectory as Kiss did in the seventies and eighties. It was a fantastic movie. Yeah, and the problem with a movie like that is that it follows Queens. Yeah. Similar to, you know, walk the line followed Ray. Yep. And other people say the second movies are better than the first, but that movie just won the Oscar. So they're not going to give it more love. You right. know what I mean? They're not going right. to go two biopics back to back. And right. yep. it's unfortunate. Uh, I haven't seen the movie. Hopefully it's good, That's but terrific. it sounds like it is. Yep. Yep. By number seven, Tom, I'm still back. Makeup okay. is still on. Oh, go ahead. But I'm going to have the first crack in the band. They just did Murph's favorite song and the worst Kiss song maybe of all time, Shandy. And who's in the dressing room? Peter. Crying. Yep. And then, can I have your bass? You want this bass? You can have this bass. Um, the end of the band. The end of okay. an era. And maybe Peter realizing he fucked up. And... um. You know, uh, you know, all of a sudden the, they're not invincible anymore. The band's broken up. Yep. Um, I think that I'd like to see that discussed because we all know that iconic story of yep. Peter still oh, yeah. in the dress room. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, all right, number eight for you. So number eight. So my number seven, like I said, was taking the makeup off in 83 and then what, what the band turned into during that. So my number eight really fast forward. So between seven and eight, there would be some like you, you know, like you've been saying some kind of voiceover kind of explaining the trajectory about what happened, you know, with that non makeup era, we're going to fast forward to 1995. Uh, when Peter joins the convention, uh, visits the convention, um, because his daughter wanted to go, um, and Peter jumps on stage and, you know, everybody's like, Holy shit. Peter, Chris is, performing some acoustic stuff at the kiss conventions and uh obviously what that led to so that yeah, was my number I, th- I i have that similar to that but i also have it is this though i okay. have it as the remember we were watching second coming yep and their videos the home videos of everybody at gene's house yeah remember how what we thought when we saw that yeah like i felt like look at them they're thinking of themselves back in, as the 20 year olds. I thought that would be in a great emotional scene. Yep. As you know, they're back together after all this bullshit, they're still trying to put on their makeup. What fits, what doesn't, Hey, you remember how to put on the makeup and they're like, they don't know. Is this going to be a joke that they're back? Or are they going to be big when they're back? Like, I, I think that whole scene would be at Jean's house and them just, you know, maybe, having one-on-one conversations with each other. Okay. So that, so it's, you're kind of piggybacking on like, kind of like the little bit of the reunion stuff. Yeah. 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 But okay. yours would be P- Peter walking up at the convention with his daughter. Yep. Versus mine would be them already doing that. And they're in their dress rehearsal. Okay. They're no, they're like trying on the uniforms because then you can have one-on-one conversations with the characters talking to one another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a little more. That's yep. how, that's how I, pictured it yeah but no that's fine because because then my my number nine is actually that so my, my number eight was peter 
coming up on stage during the 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 uh, convention, and the number num- my number nine was kind of what a little bit of what you said leading up to that reunion. You know, maybe throw in that scene from the Grammys with Tupac. Um, you know, the Tiger Stadium and and just that chaos and just you know massive love that Kiss got in that reunion in '96. Yeah. Um, okay. So my number nine is <laughs> Deja Vu. All the shit hitting the fan again with Paul like, these fucking assholes, nothing has changed. And then yep. blown it up again. And then they're saying, this is it. We're doing a farewell tour. Okay. So the farewell tour and the drama revolving around that. Okay. Okay. So for me, so for my number 10, so I had the reunion, the 96 reunion is number nine. So my number 10 would be another one of those Hollywood kind of fast forward through everything, the BS that went on. And then number 10 would be, you know, Tommy Thayer and Eric Singer, you know, being, you know, permanent members of the band, um, the, the, the different tours that they did, uh, the, you know, the release of Sonic Boom and Monster, and then the introduction of the end of the road tour. And my, my movie would end with them kind of, you know, one of those Hollywood endings, yeah. you know, with, with, with kind of just the grand finale that wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't end on the fucking kiss cruise. <laughs> With Paul in a onesie. Yeah. Um, my number 10, and I would hope that they do this movie after the end of the road ends so we know how they end, whether the originals come back or not, not yep. before, because I think okay. it would be terrible if they do. And then they the whole fucking ending of the movie is different than the end in the reality. So yep. I would just say the end of the road, their last concert in New York. Yep. yep. And they do the final bow. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, no, I, obviously, I mean, we skipped over important stuff. Oh, there's 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 so much. There's so many other things that we that we can think of. I mean, we could do another top ten or another twenty. Yeah, and these are just things that I want to see. Yep. That doesn't mean I don't want. I want to see. Like, I don't want to see. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. A smashing up his car the first time. Right. Or. Um, you know, uh, Gene learning how to breathe fire or something like that, whatever. Right. Obviously there's going to be talk about the makeup and the, the fighting and the other stuff. These are just specific things that I'm hoping are in the movie. Yeah. Major events throughout the timeline of the band, you know, major events. And, and you got to wonder what, like we said earlier with the success of, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the queen movie and rocket man, the Elton John movie, We've said it before. We know how Gene is marketing. You, you got to wonder, are the wheels turning right now to get, I mean, obviously Kiss is not Queen. Kiss is not Elton John. Yeah. Those two bands have a much broader worldwide appeal. Granted, Kiss is obviously, you know, the Kiss Army, huge fan base. But, you know, I don't think if Kiss put out a biopic right now, you know, and called it, say, you know, the Kiss Army, it wouldn't be what Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man is, but you got to wonder if Gene is doing something right now behind the scenes working on it. I also think it won't work until they're gone for a bit. Agreed. Maybe, maybe after the end of the road ends, I think they're 48 years in. Give it two years, put it on the 50th anniversary. 50th put anniversary. Mo- yep. Put the movie out, and then they do a couple concerts here and there to kind yep. of supplement that. And they can get away with it because no one's going to say, oh, you do, you just did the farewell. No. No. They're playing a couple concerts, not touring, and they can get away with it. Um, now, I'm not sure if you have you were you able to see the Molly Crew movie, The Dirt. Have you had a chance yeah. to see that yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was. I mean, it was it was a Netflix, uh, you know, original, whatever. I thought it was. I thought they did the best that they could. I thought the actors that they got for it were great. I thought they hit on, like we just said, very key bullet points. You know, the birth of the band and then some, you know, some tragic events that happened throughout it and some, you know, the rising of the band. I, I, I could see a kiss movie following kind of like that, like that kind of schedule, that template. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, you know, they just, you know, try to make themselves seem bigger than they are. Motley Crue. Absolutely. As its biggest Motley Crue, never as big and dominant as kiss. Never. No, 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 not even close. No. So. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that it just seemed like a straight to fucking video or straight to DVD type of production. No offense. Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, and, and I'm, I mean, I'm wondering, we know how much money there is now in streaming. I, I mean, would it shock you if Gene signed uh, up for I a hope not? 
I hope not. I don't know. I, I could see Gene being like, hey, you know what? It'll cost us less and get us more exposure. We do a Netflix original or a Hulu movie or something like that. They'd have, they have to do a miniseries. That, oh, well, that would be the best, obviously. But They did a miniseries on it. Yep. Yeah, wait, wait for the fucking Kiss app to come out. Oh, God, please. Kiss app, 24-7, $5.99, uh, $4.99 a month. All Kiss music, all Kiss concert. Just like fucking Disney Plus, Kiss Plus. You don't think they'll do it? I bet, guarantee he'll do it. Every every concert, every every documentary, every New video stuff coming on. Yeah, official. Oh, now you video. can be a super deluxe member of the Kiss fucking thing. Oh, I want yep. that. Yeah, just pay an extra ninety nine cents and you can get that. But that sound you hear right now is Gene Simmons. How do I make this happen? Thank you. Hey, do you want to buy that idea for me? I'm not paying you a penny. Um. I'd so right now, I'd sign up for that. Yeah, so would I. I know, <laughs> of course we would. We're bitching about the embossy, but those are 10 things that we think we'd like to see in a Kiss movie. Yeah. Please, like always, give us your feedback. What do you like? What do you not want to see? What do you uh, uh, think is a must in this movie? Um, we love hearing from you. Text it, tweet it, fucking put it all over the internet. Do whatever you need to do, but we'd love to hear your feedback. Fucking don't text it. We haven't given you our goddamn cell phone numbers yet. Ah, ah. Some of the, some of our good friends have our text. Oh, we okay. get DMs from you guys all the time. Yeah. While this is episode is going on. By the way, can I make this comment out? Do it. When I want, when I want to DM from one of our listeners and stuff, please be it kiss related or something, man, or something normal related. Uh-oh. Stop sending me unsolicited unsolicited dirty fucking pictures oh, like God. what the fuck in the middle of this episode look what i got <laughs> like i uh, i know like if we're not responding to it what stop the fuck? <laughs> stop we, yep. you know at some point this is a release from us but at other points we go back to our families yeah I'm sure Tom's wife doesn't want to be like, hey, Tom, can I just text your your mom? We're going to be running a little late. What the hell is this? Oh, you don't want to see a big friggin' dick pic on my friggin'. (laughs) Well, you guys are fucking pervs. Oh, holy shit. It's true. Anyways, that's what was going on in the middle of this shit. It Um, always happens. There's always something going on in the middle of a recording. Always. Tell me about it. So. That is our subject for today. We have uh, our usual listener questions. Yes. And here's a question that I've been seeing. This one's from, this came in back in August. I don't know why um, I just did a George Bush voice. Did you notice that? <laughs> yes. We got a, a few of those uh, couple listener questions. Questions uh, talking about the uh, Kiss Army. <laughs> so this one's kind of, it's, it's Vincent it's little- Cousineau. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of topical because we were just talking about a kiss timeline kiss movie but this question comes from italy it is from david the net oh no my favorite and david i've been saying it yep and i've been sitting on this he sent this to us way back in august <laughs> and i'm just getting around to it now so david except way back, our- wait, what was that guy picture for those socks Way Ooh, back, what's way, way back? Wasden, <laughs> John was John Wasden. They used to call him Way Back Wasden because he would just serve up four hundred foot home runs. <laughs> Trupiano used to always go Way Back, Way, way back, back, it's gone. Yeah, or or, or even worse, would go Way Back, it's caught for an out. <laughs> oh my favorite! What was the other guy? Way from in Wendell. <laughs> 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 Wendell Kim, the little the little Asian guy, wave him and Wendell. Or the, or was he the wave him and Wendell? They used to call him send oh, him in Jim. short, <laughs> short pop up to second base. He's sending the runner out by fifty miles. They used to call him wave him in Wendell or send him in Kim. <laughs> he used to get more Red Sox guys picked off at the plate. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's a ground ball to shortstop. Send him. (laughs) Wave him in Wendell. Remember him? Oh, my God. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. I know. I'm sorry. All right. So this is a good one here. So 
If you had a DeLorean like Marty McFly in Back to the Future, <laughs> what date would you put in the space time circuit and where would you go in history? <sighs> That's a great question. So, like, I, I'd be tempted to say what I want to see personally would be Kiss in 77 or 78. Okay. Right? But part of me wants to go back in a different part and maybe 78 and say, you guys are going to fuck this up. Don't break up. Listen, stop. Don't do the solo albums. Put all your best songs on an album. Yeah. Uh, that th- Those are both good answers. Tell them what I know. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I mean, my, my sweet spot for the band is the Love Gun Alive 2 era. I, I, I would want to do that. Right. I would want to do that. Or, or I would want to be around the band during the filming of Phantom of the Park. Just because that was such a fucking mess of an era for them, and I would have loved to have seen that. Hey, ah! It's my fucking body guy, body double. <laughs> oh God, it's a good question. It could pick. It could. It could be anything. I mean, any dates. I mean, who knows? You know. But that's a good one, David. We love you, buddy. David, you are the best. Yep. Go ahead, brother. All Hurry right, up. so next one we got. This one is from James. James. James the RA. I knew you were going to say it. James the RA. So this poor bastard was an oh. RA for us. So poor we would bastard. come in back into our dorm two, three in the morning. And for some reason, I thought it would be funny to go, oh, okay, walking by, back to our room. And all of a sudden, just start booting on his door. And then we'd all have to run. <laughs> the no, worst. No the worst. That. Bully mentality in the world. <laughs> Such a it's fucking brutal. Kick his door, boom, 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 and everybody like, "What the fuck?" And start running. <laughs> <laughs> Poor James. It's important. We can't. I can, we can't even say the word. Jay. You heard it. I just said the word James. James, James, the, James, James the RA. The RA. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. We're, so we're this comes next one. J- so James from Facebook, <laughs> with the exception, with the exception of someone from Kiss. Who, if you could get any guest on the podcast, with the exception of a Kiss member, who would you want to get on? Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has to be like on our podcast, or just yes, any- on, on, on on Shout It Out Loudcast. With the exception of a Kiss member, who would you want as a guest? Let me tell you, Zeus, I God. pinned her down and I got that pussy. Lick it up, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I went to town on her. I oh. called over Gene. Gene, get that god of thunder cock over here. And that's when it was time for me to dance all over her face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I got a lyric for you. How about putting a log in a fireplace? Oh, oh I've please. already done that. Mr. President, I've already came up with that. God, I love that demon. <laughs> All right. Look at Bill Clinton, the honorary kiss member. That was gonna, gonna dance over. All, All right. right. Stay on well, target. Who who would I put on non-kiss member? Correct. Holy fuck. I mean I know it's a it's a good question. It's but, tough. Okay. I gotta put parameters on this. Is it to put on shout it out loud cast or any yes. podcast? No, 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 Elvis. No. Or I mean, you know no, no, I mean? no, 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 no. If, if, if somebody somebody reaches out to us and said, "Hey, you guys have won a contest. You can have any guest you want on shout it out loud cast, with the exception and... of a Kiss member. Who do you want? No, but it has to be Kiss centric, somewhat. Correct. That's the point. Right. Yes. Um. Yep. Fuck. Yeah, exactly. I don't. We already did Jericho. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Seriously, I would probably have Jericho, and we already got him. Um, yep. But I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of guys I'd like to get on future guests. I don't want to give it away, but who would be my biggest thing? I mean, does like you know, like Bruce Kulick count? Yeah. Let, no, no Kiss member, past or present. Nobody from the band Kiss. Okay, so I can't say Bruce. No. Um, I would kill to have Bruce on here. I mean, Doc. Okay. He knows a lot about the shit that happened backstage and stuff. Yep. I'd probably say Doc Mickey. The real ones I would like to get, though, they're dead. 
Yeah, right. Bill like, O'Coin and Sean Delaney, Sean Delaney and Neil Bogart. Yep. I'd right. love to hear what they had to say about the band. Yep. Um, and they're all unfortunately have since passed. But live, I, I mean, I'm thinking off the top of my head. That's a great question. Yeah. I'd probably say Doc. Okay. You know, yeah. because you know, the other guys around the history, they've hit all the podcast circuits. We've heard their stories. They're at the conventions. Somebody like Doc, you know, he'll give his whatever kind of like PC type answers. I'd love to get him here and start asking him shit off the record and stuff. Yep. Right. What about I, you? I can't believe you didn't answer this because I thought you would jump on it. I would want Stuart on here. Oh, I don't want him on here. I want him on here. I don't want to. I, I, I want him on and I want it to be a serious no insults. We, I wouldn't. We wouldn't. It wouldn't coach. work. Uh, it it w- won't it, work. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to do it without saying to him. So, let's count all the ways you're a fucking hypocrite. That's like my it point. Would get to the point, like it, we, it, I wouldn't be able to do it with him. If, now, mind if, you, I, I, go ahead. If, if he committed to two hours on our show, not, oh, 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 not, look, I, don't, I won't commit two hours to him. Okay. <laughs> my my point is this: the whole thing is make believe. It's pretend. Yeah. You get two hours with him of a legitimate back and forth interview, and it's we're talking about kiss and nothing else. I would want him on, or if I can't get him on, okay, I'll tell you who I'd want. This is kind of a deep cut here. The best kiss book I ever read, and I've told you about this before, is a book called Kiss and Sell, written by C.K. Lent, who was the ki- who was Kiss's business manager in the late seventies, early eighties. The greatest kiss book. ever ever written bar none nothing's even close it's called oh. kiss and sell I written have... by written by christopher lent if i could get that guy on here and pick his brain about that book and what he saw and what he did with that band that would be a guy i'd love to have on here yeah no i i probably would say doc at this point i i fucking wouldn't want Stewart on here okay it, i mean it, it, it would be the whole point of me having Stewart on would be on one subject matter. The the audience would be bored as hell. It'd be me going back and forth with him about you're just pissed off because they don't like you anymore. You're just pissed off because right. you don't like them anymore. Right. Right. You know, so you're trying to tell me that fucking bang tangos third keyboardist from their fucking fourth album is more important for you to talk to than Paul Stanley. And, right. Uh, you know, you're not interested in Kiss anymore. Like, give me a fucking break. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have that kind. Of, it just would. It would just be, you know, one of those things. There, how, how tiring would this be? Because I'd be like back and forth. And he's so entrenched in his opinion about this. He's not budging at this point. Okay. And so and so would we. And so it would be kind of like useless. It'd be like a broken record going over and over again. Yeah. So. Maybe. If I could have, if I could have anybody from the band Kiss, it, it would it would not it would we said I would I would probably want Bruce Kulick on because I think I think he, I feel like he'd be the one that would be maybe give you a little bit more not a lot but a little yeah. bit more than anybody else. Yeah, I think Eric uh, Singer would be a little honest. Yeah, honest. maybe. Part of me would want to have Ace on because you know whatever he'd say it'd go viral. Because he's going to yeah. bound to say something stupid. It's true. I love Peter. He's my favorite member. But I'm just going to get a lot of bitching <laughs> if I put him on. I don't even know he, if you'd get a lot of bitching from him. I think you might just get a lot of like, I, I don't know. I, I don't even think he'd give you bitching. I, you know? Honestly, I would probably say for me would be Gene. Because I, I think there's nothing that he won't discuss yeah, uh, obviously Paul is useless. He'd hang up within two seconds of uh, well, yeah. getting something. He's getting something that he's uncomfortable with. Yeah. But Gene, you could say, listen, I think Paul Peter's singing. I mean, drumming was so integral in the beginning of the band. He might say to you, "Yeah, I do," and he did well in this album. This that he's not going to be like, "Well, I am programmed not to say nice things about right. Peter Chris." Right. Like he'll say, "Yeah, I did this." You know, he'll get into his. The usual, oh, blue Peter will curse away. Like he'll say that shit, but if you ask him a poignant question right on that, he'll he'll give you an honest. And he likes talking about rare shit. So tell him, you know what? When I was just listening to uh, uh, Burning Up with Fever, 
who is that guy that handles that? You know, like, oh, uh, that was so and so with so and so. Like, he'll tell you shit. You know, at that point, I was going to get Meatloaf to come in and play. And then uh, yeah. I got horny. So I banged Cher over the fucking <laughs> couch and I decided to call it a day. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, Gene's, Gene's my guy. So I, w- I would love to have him on just because I just I love him but... to talk to. Yeah. He I, will, I, I, yeah. I think it, you're right. It did give you something. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great. Absolutely. That's a gr- that's a great that's question. Great question. Tough, tough, wow. tough to an- tough to answer, but good ones. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, let's go into where people can find us. They can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio. You can find us on YouTube. Um, interact with us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you can email us at shout it out loudcast at gmail.com shout it out loudcast at gmail.com um we love getting emails we love getting messages from you whether it's a dm from facebook whether it's a dm from twitter as long as it's not porn um you know we love hearing from you guys uh tom something you want to add well we talk about emails i got one that i'd like to read uh, okay. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. We got an email from one of our big fans, Deuce. And uh, we love Deuce. We love interacting with him. Huge music fan, huge kiss fan. So this is kind of entertaining. Deuce's top 10 changes in my life because of the shout it out loudcast. How awesome number 10. Is. Number 10. My friends wonder how I can possibly be busy every Saturday night. Well, you know, it's a podcast. You don't have to listen to it on Saturday night, but thank you. <laughs> Number nine, the mention of Shandy. And all I think of is someone named Murph. Number eight, I live in shock that some people hate. I'm in need of love. That's because the song sucks. Number seven, click T shop is now my go-to spot for cool kiss merch. Ed click T shop.com. Perfect. Number six, I can't and- listen to. Oh. Where you can get all your shout it out loud cast uh, merchandise. Paraf- paraphernalia. I can't listen to Peter Chris songs without having visions of Ralph from the Muppets <laughs> with the piano. Whenever I'm enjoying I'll fight hell to hold you, oh. I find myself saying, if Tom and Zeus only knew. Oh, song is fucking brutal. Oh, fucking terrible. Brutal. Number four. I've forgotten Stuart's real name. Number three, Stuart. I say. <laughs> number three, I say what the fuck a lot more. <laughs> number two, I now know that Paul is the band and Gene is the brand. And the number one change in my life, courtesy of the Shout It Out Loudcast, farts get me singing. I want you. <laughs> Thank you guys. I will never be the same. Deuce. Dude, that is beautiful. That is that it's beautiful. And we we love that kind of stuff. We the fact that we're entertaining even one person out there is just amazing. And we love that. Thank you for oh, that, Deuce. That was great to see. That seriously, it's just uh heartwarming. Yep. Awesome. And, Very cool. Yeah. And you know, amongst the other things we get, we get some DMs. Steve Vargo sent me a personalized message. He sent one to you as well. Uh, yep. thanking us and especially during the holidays and Thanksgiving. Very nice of Steve. He's one of our favorite listeners. And, you know, there's so many of you guys that we can't even, you know, like, like, oh, yeah, that's our favorite. Oh, no, this week, this guy's our favorite. It's like Kiss songs, all you guys. You're all our favorites, all right? And we yep. can't thank you enough. Um, so we really appreciate it. Keep the emails coming to us. We love reading them on the air. Just like we did with Deuce keep the messages coming and please keep the podcast in other people's view. And the other way to do that is by giving us reviews online. So go to like iTunes, go to pod chaser, give us a five star child review, tell people why they should listen to us. We move up the food chain and get out to more and more people by you guys rating us and giving us those great reviews. We can't thank you enough, and we'll definitely give you a shout out if you do so. Please continue to do that. Um, Tom, anything else you want to add? 
Yeah, we say it every week. You know, thank you guys just so much. You know, we're just we're so excited that people are into this. You know, obviously we're sure as hell into it. Um, and like Zeus said, we're, we're, where we can be found, we're also part of that awesome Pantheon podcast uh, family. Uh, we're not just us, but all those other podcasts that are on there, depending on what you're into, all different kinds of music, rock, pop, whatever. Great stuff. And uh, we're, we're happy to be part of that podcast family as well. So, yep. And always a special shout out to our boy, Daryl. Uh, Daryl Albert is the best out there. We thank you and love you, Daryl. Thank you again for all your help. Um, famous last words. I don't want a lover's heartache. I don't need nobody's sympathy. So come on, get the party started. All I need is lying next to me. Ooh. I know you write me sexy letters. Oh, God. And you send your pictures for my wall. You found the hotel where I'm staying. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> and you build up the nerves and then you call. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I'm living in oh, 